What's up everybody, it's Luke James, not the singer, and this is my first indie review for Cynic and Rod McCoy's album, Salah. If you or someone you know is an independent artist and they want a review done, you can hit up Luke at RedMatterSite.com for more information. Now, Cynic and Rod McCoy represent Alabama and Mississippi, and for more information on them, just click About underneath this video on YouTube, and you can see where you can reach them on Twitter, where you can listen to their music, purchase their music, and more. So this album starts with an intro called The Skin Intro. I'm not really going to talk too much about it, because it's just an intro. There's not really much going on, just some talking and setting up the album. So the album moves from The Skin Intro into the song New South. Now this song has really loud bass to it. It's sort of just a beat em up type of track, something you just blast while you were driving around. You might play it at a party. It's kind of a upbeat type of song. It's not relaxed in any sort of way. And right away you can tell that they have good chemistry with each other, the way they rap. They have that cool, smooth, southern sort of sound that you might kind of compare to like 8-Ball and MJG. I know those guys are classic, so I'm not trying to put them up on that level, but I'm just saying there's that same type of vibe to their raps. And as you carry on through the album, you'll see that even more, especially with some of the production choices, which are very smooth and laid back. Just like the next song, Serenity. It's very smooth, laid back. Like I said, the beat is just peaceful, thought-provoking, and breezy. And there's no hook on this song. It's just rhyming from start to finish, which actually works pretty cool because it doesn't break the momentum up and it flows solidly from start to finish. There weren't really any lyrics that blew me away or stuck out, but these two guys just sound good on this type of beat, and I think this is where they really should keep their focus. I can't say where anyone should keep their focus. What am I talking about? I'm just saying, in my opinion, I really like them on this type of beat rather than New South, which was more uppity and almost trap-like with how loud and uh, more fast-paced it was. From there, we moved to the skit Wimberly and Burke, which I found kind of weird that a skit would happen that early in the album, but it's kind of funny. I'm not going to say too much about it, just like the intro, because it's just talking, it's not a song. So we'll move on to the next song, Turkish Nights, which is actually one of my favorite tracks on the album. It might be the standout track on the album. Uh, Cynic and Rob McCoy are sharing stories about the time that they spent in Turkey, which is really interesting, and they talk about the times they had with girls there, drinking, partying, getting into fights, and just how people viewed them and kind of looked at them out of place. Like, two brothers from the south over here in Turkey just hanging out, having a good time. What's going on? One of the lyrics actually said, Niggas in Turkey done came from out of space. And I really like that line. It just kind of put it in perspective. You could kind of see that people in Turkey probably were looking at them like, What the hell? Where are these two southern boys from? That's probably not how people talk in Turkey, but you know what I mean. Very good song. Next we have City Lights, which has a very smooth pimpish type of sound to it. Just from the title you can kind of grasp what the song is going to be like. It's just about riding under city lights. It's just that smooth pimpish feel like I said. And it actually has one of my favorite rhymes on the album. I'm going to read it so I don't mess it up. Looking for some haze of the Triple H pedigree. Stronger than China. Stuff a dust with the power bomb. Put me on my back room spinning like a CD-ROM. I like that shit. That was cool. I'm a wrestling fan, so I can't hate on that. I gotta like that. I gotta give props to that. So that was a really dope lyric, and it stuck out to me. Next we have Million Dollar Scheme, which is produced by Johnny Giuliano, who did a lot of work with Wiz Khalifa. It has a really smooth, bubbly, almost neo-soul type of beat. And again, these guys sound perfectly comfortable on this type of beat. I really like the vibe of it. The bass is bubbly. I would have liked to hear some singing on this song, or maybe even on some of the other songs. I think like a little bit of harmonizing from whether a male or a female voice could really add some depth to these songs. Because a lot of these songs are good, but they don't have a lot of depth to them. There's not a lot that really sticks out and grasps you as overly original or creative. But it's a good song. Next we have AHE, also known as Audible Hustle Entertainment, which is their group, their team, their label. And this was a really cool song. I like the flows on this because they're a little more fast-paced and they're taking a bit more of a chance with their flow, whereas the other songs, it's kind of just simplistic and smooth and not a whole lot to it. So on the rapping front, this song is definitely one of the standouts. And again, the beat is smooth and cool. Then we move into Last Supper, which is a posse cut featuring Blunder and EJ, their label mates. And this song is eight minutes long, which I thought kind of, I thought it was kind of weird to put an eight minute long song right in the middle of your album. I think it could have worked maybe as an outro, especially since the production is kind of quiet and stale. It's not bad, but it's not really exciting. It's just kind of monotone throughout, and the verses don't really add a whole lot to that either. Uh, I thought Blunder, who raps third, he kind of stepped it up a little bit. I liked the energy that he brought to the track, so that was cool. But as a whole, I wasn't really a fan of this track, and I definitely don't think it needed to be eight minutes long. Next we have the song Dear God, 
I don't have a whole lot to say about this one. I wasn't a real big fan of this. I thought it kind of felt out of place on the album, which for the most part has a very smooth feel, whereas this beat is just dark, eerie, and depressing. But I do appreciate that they were trying to do something a little different on there and maybe bring some versatility, but I just don't think it really worked that well or fit. Next we have the song Pain's Rain, which I thought stuck out lyrically because, again, just like on Turkish Nights, they're kind of showcasing their storytelling ability, which is very refreshing. So they're talking about a guy who got caught by the DEA for selling drugs and a woman who has been abused and been through a lot of things. And the hook is just basically lifted from Jay-Z's Song Cry, which I didn't really like that. It fits the song, but I don't know. I'm not a big fan when people just kind of put their own take on something that we've already heard before, especially when it's a memorable song like Song Cry. And the beat itself on this song is a little reminiscent of Song Cry. So it's not a bad track, but, you know, I think if they had to change the hook on it, and maybe made the beat a little different, or even they could have kept the beat, but just make the hook different. I think it really would have helped make this track stick out a lot, instead of sounding like just an attempt at making another song cry. Next we have Price of Success. I don't really have a whole lot to say about this one. The beat is just a loop, and it's kind of monotonous, and I know it's a sample that I heard before. I can't place it, but I know it's from a hip-hop classic, and I think I've heard the sample multiple times, so again, that makes this song sort of forgettable. It's not bad, just not very memorable. There's not much to say about it. Then we come to the song, My Own Shit. And this might be my least favorite song on the album. The beat kind of just drones on and on, and the way the hook loops and loops at the start and is layered over top of the droning strings on the beat just really threw me off, and it didn't make for a good listen. It almost makes it unlistenable. But the rapping in it is okay once the verses kick in, but the hook and the beat really take you out of this song. Thankfully, we come to Parking Lot Pimpin', which is a great song, so you can kind of, you know, forgive that My Own Shit song. Parking Lot Pimpin', one of the top songs on the album. Very smooth, just like I keep saying about a lot of the other songs. But this is where these guys sound their best. When they're just rapping about girls and chilling, laid-back vibes. This is what they have mastered 100%. As far as the lyrical side of thing, there's not anything here that's full of a lot of depth. But I do like the reference they made to uh, Peter Parker, where they say they're smoking Peter Parker's bitch. And if you don't you know, read comics or watch Spider-Man or know anything about Spider-Man, you know that Peter Parker's bitch or girl or woman, whatever you want to call it, her name is Mary Jane. So you see what they did there. I liked that. Definitely one of the better songs, Parking Lot Pimpin'. But then we come to break the pussy off. So Parking Lot Pimpin', one of my favorite songs on the album, is sandwiched between the two songs that I think definitely should have been left off. But that's just my opinion. This song, just the beat just sounds like it was made with the very basic Fruity Loops instruments. Like, if you've ever played around on Fruity Loops, listen to this song. The drums and the strings, all the instrumentation, it just sounds very simple and basic. I don't know if this is one of the first songs that they, they made for this album over the time it took. That's very possible. But it's just not a good song, and the content, you know, come and break this pussy off for a real nigga. It is what it is. I don't know. It's like they were kind of going for a dark, eerie strip club anthem, but it just didn't work. I think if the instruments on it were a little better and stronger, maybe then it could have worked. But even the melody and the tone of the song just kind of drags on and on, and it doesn't really make it enjoyable. But maybe some people will like this. I don't know. Maybe if you love going to strip clubs and you spend a lot of time there, I don't know. I'm, I'm married with a kid and my hairline's receding. I'm washed up. But if you spend a lot of time in strip clubs and all that type of shit, maybe this is the song you like. But for me personally, I just really didn't like it. I thought it was terrible. The beat was just, oh, the beat is brutal. So the last song on the album is Rolling Stone. After Rolling Stone, there's an outro that I'm not going to talk about because, again, it's just talking and it's an outro. But Rolling Stone, I mean, look at what the title is. Rolling Stone, you know that it's about just rolling around, smoking, being high. It sort of has that currency type of feel to the song, so if you smoke weed and you are in that lane of music, you like that, you're going to like this. And again, I know I keep saying it, but it follows in the theme of their best songs on the album, where it's smooth and mellow. So in conclusion, I give this album a 3 out of 5. I think it's a very solid project, but with some minor tweaking, it could have been a lot better. Maybe experimenting with the vocals a little bit more, adding a bit of depth to the lyrics, maybe even having the beats be, you know, not so monotonous at times, having some more breakdowns throughout. But all in all, I still would recommend this project, especially if you like... Like I said, the smooth, pimptastic stylings of 8-Ball and MJG. If you like that, you're going to like Cynic and Rod McCoy's album, Salah. So check it out. Hit them up on Twitter. If you want to review or you want to contact me, hit me up at Luke at RedMatterSite.com. Like my videos, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff, and I'll see you next time.